Well, fellas, the last time I was in town, I picked up a couple of little hotties. <laughs> Let me go inside, I'll tell you about them. <laughs> Ah, fellas, it's not what you think. No midlife crisis bull poopy going on here. What I picked up were these here, these little hotties, okay? Thermal insoles. Now, oh, I don't know, a year or two ago, I bought these muck boots. They were recommended, plus they were on sale. <laughs> so I gave them a go. And they're all right. That's all I'm going to say about them. The good point is they're pretty comfortable. Okay? Um, walk a long ways down in the valley and everything. Uh, they do all right. Not too much sock creeping going on when I'm wearing them. You know how some of those rubber boots just pull your socks down. So... They're pretty good in that regard, and they are waterproof. Uh, yeah. They've held up well. The tread, pretty good. This is not a boot review. I'm just sharing what's going on in my world. Uh, what I don't like about them is I freeze my freaking feet. Especially the soles of my feet. I'm telling you, if I'm out in a deer stand and i got these on, uh, the underside of my feet get frozen. So, double knot up on the socks, well, then there's really not too much room in these. If you get a bigger boot so you can double up on the socks, well, then if you're not doubling up on the socks, then you're creeping your socks down because there's too much slop in the boot. I used to have thermal insoles similar to this back in the day. Uh... I got a, I saw these and I go, I'm gonna pick up a pair. Mm. Little hotties, huh? I bet you these things come up in a lot of Google searches. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Alright. So uh I I got these. I've had them in my boots now a couple of weeks. They're uh felt and then they got the shiny stuff, like bubble foil, almost. Now, I did try and put some bubble foil underneath these, but then there wasn't enough room. I did put bubble foil underneath the uh, insoles of my felt liners and my other boots. Honestly, I can't say if I, if I benefited from it. Oh, I know a lot of people say to do it. Uh, honestly, I haven't found too much difference. These, however, did make a difference. Uh, my feet do still get cold in these boots, but not as fast. <laughs> now, when I, it's real cold out, I wear my vintage Sorrells, and these boots are old, and I wear those, but uh, I don't know. So, for a small investment, these were about six bucks, I think. I'll put the link in the description below. But I'm also going to put links to some other insoles because I was searching these online after I bought them because I want to put some in my other boots. And I found some other ones that look pretty good. Might even look better than this. And I want to try them. So I'm going to put those in the link down below too. Yeah. So uh, they've made a difference in the muck boots, you know, so uh, you know, I, I recommend these things. These are uh, for a small investment, they're pretty good. And, and then the warmer months just pull them out, you know, and they didn't seem to crowd the boot too much. I just want to share that with you guys. You guys are always asking me you know, about stuff. So that's something I'm using right now and it's working out. Yeah. Well, I just fired up the generator, got the tools out. I'm gonna make a few changes in the greenhouse here. When we built this last year, put in this big uh, potting rack and then another rack here. And these were for all the seedlings that were starting. And then I got the racks overhead. We have the potting bench. And we put in a few raised beds here that you've seen before. 
Since we're going to try and grow some stuff through the winter, just an experiment. Really don't know how it's going to work out, but we're going to give it a go. And to grow things in the winter, we need more beds in here. So I'm going to cut away this section of a uh, rack. I'll probably leave it from here back. And then I'll build a raised bed, much like these are here, and probably make it maybe 20 inches deep or something by, oh, I don't know, that looks about six foot, something like that. Now I gotta get cracking. My, my dirt pile out here is <laughs> freezing up like concrete, so it's either I gotta do it today and get this done or forget about it. So I'm gonna get to work. This dirt will settle a bit, and then I'll have room for watering. Uh, been keeping the wood stove going. It's 72 in here now, and uh, I've got a bunch of seedlings, some lettuce and spinach, and a few other things. And I'm going to leave them in the styrofoam trays for probably a week, and by that time the soil will be warmed up good and ready for planting. Well, with the snow coming, I wanted to get this done. I mean, it couldn't be done in the snow, but then you get the snow on top of everything, and it really, it just kind of discourages you. You know what I mean? But today's a sunny day. We got it done. And I just got to do a little bit of rebracing on that shelf there. And anything, let them cut this one a little bit shorter and move it down. That way, when you're in here and you stand up, you don't be banging your noggin on that. I know that's going to happen, but it's good. Mission accomplished for today. Well, folks, we're getting our first real storm of the season. We've gotten probably about a foot of snow so far in accumulation uh, since the first snowfall in October. Of course, that's all melted away. Uh, they're calling for up to eight inches now. And we've got a few inches. It's coming down pretty good. Uh, wind's kicking up. Yeah. I don't know how soon it's going to be before we are reduced to snowmobile and ATV access again. Yeah. So it gets inconvenient a little bit, but it also adds a lot of adventure to our lifestyle. And an adventurous lifestyle is why we moved up here. But I'm going to get inside and I want to show you what we've accomplished indoors. I'm burning up some of the scraps from the project yesterday. It all makes flames and it all throws heat. So in the stove it goes. You know, it's a little slice of heaven being down here. And uh, really, really, really happy that we built this. And if I ever move someplace else, I'm certainly going to be building another one. The greenhouse, it's been good therapy, that's for sure. Yeah, so I'll show you how things have worked out. So we got the bed put in yesterday, which you saw already. 
Now I would have liked to have brought it closer to the wall, but down there I have a ledger um, because there's a bunch of styrofoam insulation inside the skirting there. Uh, I want to keep all the cold from seeping through. Um, sometimes when the sun is beating on here, like in late March, I'll put some planters of stuff down there. And it's actually a nice warm spot when the sun is coming through the plastic. Yep. This bed um, will be growing greens in here. Hopefully growing good through the winter. Now, as most of you know, this is the first greenhouse for us. We always wanted one and just never built one. We had those little plastic hoop houses that I showed you in a video in the past and those worked out great. Got us a real early start on everything. Jump on the season, it worked out super. Very, very little investment. Um, this was more of an investment, but well worth it. This has just been great having this. And you saw the plants that we started last spring we started them uh, March 5th which was about three weeks too early for some stuff but I gotta tell you when you're snowing and blowing and you come down here and it was like Florida in here it was wonderful and it made the winter go by really quick now this Swiss chard here this was some of the Swiss chard that was growing out in the garden and at the end of the season, um, I pulled up some right by the root ball, pull them right out of the ground. I put them in this bed and they went through a little bit of transplant shock. But as you can see, they bounced back. They're a little short right now because mama just clipped a bunch of it uh, yesterday or the day before. Now we have a little bit more of that growing here and we've been picking it and it's been great. We're going to have some with supper tonight. Now these here, these were some mums that Lori bought and we had them on the porch and then, you know, winter started and a heavy frost came and everything died back and looked horrible. And I said, well, why don't I just bring them in here and see what happens? Now I wish that I brought them in sooner. They had already been hit by several hard frost. Uh, the flowers died off, the plants turned brown. And that's when I got the idea, well, I ought to put them in the greenhouse and see what happens. So I brought them in. Mama cut them way back, as you can see. They're sprouting new life. So I'm curious to see what's going to happen with them. Now this one's got some new growth coming. This one over here is really bouncing back. Now, since this is our first greenhouse, everything we do and everything we have done has been an experiment. Some experiments are failures and others work out remarkably well. Some are real eye-openers. So uh, some of the experiments that we've been doing is at the end of the season, we just pull it out of the garden and put it in here. Some of it, we cut off all the dead stuff, all the plant above the surface had died, but I go, the root ball is still gonna be alive. So we, we bring in the root ball and plant it and I'll show you. This was one of the kale plants. Everything on top had died. And you can see these are just like stubs. See, see the stub right there? And it's springing back to life. So we'll see how that works out. A lot of the tomatoes in here, they're just not getting enough light, but they are hanging on. All right. As it grows new growth, new fresh growth, the older stuff, kind of dies off and looks crappy as you can see but they're still producing some tomatoes there's a couple nice tomatoes there there's a few more there nice cluster right there that's a nice cluster of tomatoes to have for December 5th up on the mountain huh? <laughs> now these right here these are the Chadwick variety and I will definitely grow these again. I think the first tomatoes that we picked from the garden this year were from these plants right here. And now, December 5th, up here on the mountain, it's still producing new fruit. It's still blossoming and starting new tomatoes. 
So I'm curious to see how long this will continue. Will it just keep on going? I don't know. Never had a greenhouse, and I've never grown this variety before. Now the bottom of the plants are looking like crap, like I showed you, but they're still producing and still growing. Now look at this right here. This had broken off of here, and then it healed, and it grew down, now it's coming back up. It's got some new fruit right here. You see the blossoms right there? The little blossoms that it had? And there's already two tomatoes growing right there, and it looks like there's going to be another one there. And it's got new blossoms right here, and probably have some more tomatoes growing off of that. But it just keeps producing. And Mama's always down here picking tomatoes. She was uh, here on Thanksgiving Day picking tomatoes. <laughs> Pretty good. It's really cool to be picking these at Thanksgiving. Day. I know it. Huh? And that's a first for us. And then I got a couple of pots here. This was a plant that I brought in after the frost had killed it. I cut it off and brought it in. You see the stems right here? All right. I cut them off, put it in a pot, and look, it's growing new life. Same with these here. These were cutoffs. They're growing, and look, a little tomato right there. Okay. Up there on the upper shelf, those are radishes, and I also have radishes in the other container. I'm going to bring some of this stuff down, and I want to show you. In the past, I've shown you how we do all of our seed starting in these floating seed trays. This was an experiment that we tried maybe, I don't know, seven, eight years ago. A friend of mine sent me a couple of trays, gave them a try. What a huge success we have had with it. So this is our go-to method of seed starting now and always will be. Like I said, we are always experimenting. So I did another experiment this year. I started some radishes not long ago, and I put some radish seeds in the floating seed tray. I started the other ones right in one of these window box inserts. This was an eye opener. I'm, I'm going to show you the difference between these two. Okay. These seeds were planted at the same time, the same day. Okay, I know that this looks like a bunch of bull poopy because there is a huge difference between these and these, but I swear, folks, I'm telling you the truth. I am showing you this to help you. I don't sell seed trays. Personally, I don't give a fiddler's fart what you use or what you buy. Honest to God's truth. I am showing you the results that we have and why I start everything in the floating seed tray. What I did here was just an experiment. And this is the results. These seeds were put right in the dirt of this tray. This is the same soil. There's no difference between that soil and this. These were started in a seed tray. When they were about that big, I transferred them into this and they grew. These sprouted up. This is as big as they have gotten. They haven't grown anymore. You would think that the ones that got transplanted would get set back, but they didn't. Why do the plants that are started in the seed tray do better than the ones starting in the soil? I don't know. I don't have the answer for it. Now this was a real eye-opener for me folks because I have never done the side-by-side -side comparison. I never did it because for, I don't know, the last six or eight years every seed that I started was started in a floating seed tray. Even the big pumpkin seeds and everything. I didn't put anything in the garden. It all went in the seed tray. And what I like about that is when it's time to put it in the garden, I see what I have going in the garden. You know, you're messing with those tiny little lettuce seeds and stuff like that, trying to put them in the garden, and then you don't really know what's coming up. 
sometimes you got weeds starting and it's crowding things and you maybe had a little rodent got in there you don't really know if it germinated you know this way you do I start extras I see exactly what I have going in the garden I pick the best ones and I plant them and it works for me I got I have instant gratification that way and I love it I love it now, one thing I want to pass on to you guys Okay, something I learned with these, like you said, we're always experimenting. And if you're thinking of giving these floating seed trays a try, which I highly recommend that you do, when you start shopping for them online, you're going to see that there are different sizes available. There's like a 242 plug, 128, 72, 32, etc. All right, so you're going to see that the 242 plug tray is the same price as the 128 size tray and you're going to think that you're getting a better deal with the greater number of plugs. Well, it depends on what you're planning on doing with them because what I'm going to show you here, 240 something plug, 128 size plug, the trays themselves are the same size. It's the size of the cells that is different. Okay. So think about what your expectations are, and what your plans are. If you're only going to use the trays for starting your seeds to little seedlings like I showed you and putting them in the ground right away, of course, the more cells in the tray, the less trays you have to buy. But if you're living in a situation like we are, where we started our seeds in March, and then in May, we had 20 degree weather with snow. The seedlings are going to stay in your trays a lot longer than expected. And they're going to start getting pot bound if the cells are too small. All right. So think about what your expectations are. If you're only going to be in the tray a short amount of time, the smaller plugs are fine. But if you think they're going to be in the tray for a longer period of time, you're going to have better results with the larger plugs, which means you are going to have to buy more trays. Just something I wanted to pass on to you folks. Because this one was like 242 plugs. It worked good for the tiny seeds, as long as I'm going to plant them in the ground real soon. So this here is like 128 size. This is 72 plugs, and this is 32, all right? And there might even be other sizes available, all right? I think the 72 size is a very good size to use, good all-around size. And I wanted to pass that on to you folks. Well, my friends, I just wanted to share the results of our experiments with you because having this greenhouse has been an interesting endeavor, to say the least. As always, we will continue to keep on filming the progress and bring you up to speed as the winter unfolds. I'm pretty certain, though, that as long as we can keep it warm enough in here that those little seedlings should thrive in this bed and we'll have fresh greens all winter long. Yeah. As you can see, it's winter time outside, but it's pretty darn sweet in here, and I'm certainly glad we built this. So that's it for now, and all the best to you, and God bless. Frank and the boss out of walking in the woods, living life happy and free. Tracks in the snow everywhere they go, there's a pokey way up in that tree. A beaver built a pond where they have some fun Taking life a day at a time Best friends until the end Frankie and the boss Frankie and the boss Frankie and the boss